I am the executive director of Math and Quality. and struck down Section 3 of the Defense of Marriage Act. The message was clear. The days when the government can relegate our love, our relationships, our families, and the commitment we make to each other to second-class status are numbers. social media all day like I was. <laughs> it's my job too. I'm lucky. When Edie Windsor was asked today why she brought the DOMA lawsuit, she said, I sued the United States because I love Mia. And I think that pretty much sums it up, doesn't it? Although those are certainly important, it's about fairness and dignity and the most core aspect of our basic humanity. And today, some of that was recognized. Here in Massachusetts, we have celebrated marriage equality for nine wonderful years. I'm just so honored to be the mayor at the time that this is 
what's happening. The elected officials here are Vice Mayor Denise Simmons, Mark McGovern, the school committee. We are all very proud of you. And I think that this is the time when we talk about marriage equality, but we also talk about human equality. And Aaron Stone told me this is what we really need to be thinking about. It's about being equally human. And I want to, I want to thank you for bringing that concept to us, for honoring us here in Cambridge with your presence today uh, and your presence on Marriage Equality Day. And come back again next year when we'll be celebrating 10 years of marriage equality in Cambridge.
general. Um, wanted to be here today um, to celebrate with all of you. But thank you. And I'd like to uh, turn it now over to John, who really deserves all the credit for the great work done um, on behalf of our case in, in, in uh, for civil rights, for the Constitution, and for Massachusetts. Because Massachusetts is where this all started. Massachusetts was the first state to have marriage equality. Massachusetts was the first state to have serious DOMA challenges that led to a district court and then a court of appeals striking it down, saying for the first time that there was no justification for this law, laying the groundwork for the decision we saw today, the decision that said what we've always known to be true, that a marriage is a marriage. There's no such thing as second-class marriages. Yeah, but 
Because you know what they did on the Voting Rights Act. And we have to stand, that's right, we have to stand together. Because if anyone is being treated unjustly, then everyone is being
sometimes explicitly and sometimes with violence, that we weren't equal, that we weren't good enough, and that we didn't have the same dignity as our straight peers. So when this court here today affirms our basic human dignity, our basic equality, we say, job. <laughs>
get their licenses and thousands of people to celebrate with all of us here in Cambridge. We'll never forget that day. And we wanted, it was, to be Cambridge residents and have the city really welcome us and want to be the first uh, city to do this after the many years that they had um, passed and as a partnership and many other innovations for GBLP people. And then we were the first, the first uh, city hall to open our doors. And we want to thank everyone in the city of Cambridge. This was all decorated. I mean, what an incredible welcome. So what a, we are so grateful to all of everyone here and to and, and really feel still this incredible wonder that uh, our marriage and our families now recognized not only by the state of Massachusetts, but now by the highest court in the land and by the federal government. It's been an incredible decade. Uh, all of us have gone through, Susan and I, our son Peter, we really could never have imagined before the court decision in 2003 here in Massachusetts that our marriage, that we would actually be able to be married. And we included Margaret Marshall's thrilling words on our wedding invitation, as many of you did. Uh, and I quote, the, the Massachusetts Constitution affirms the dignity and equality of all individuals. The right to marry means little if it does not include the right to marry the person of one's choice. There was actually an article in the Globe a couple months ago that more and more heterosexual couples are beginning to use that language and some of the beautiful language from that decision in their marriage vows and in their marriage invitations because it is so powerful. And in fact, a friend of, a friend of ours just told us this weekend her daughter's getting married in, uh, in, uh, the, in uh, August and uh, she really wasn't sure that she wanted to get married or what it was all about and the fact that she was at our wedding uh, and was so uh, was part of the celebration made her go back to read all the stuff about why you get married and why it was such a big deal and it's made her feel uh, much more firm in her marriage as a result of that. We're really great, grateful too to the uh, seven courageous plaintiffs that brought the case in Massachusetts and to the plaintiffs in the federal case as well. It took tremendous courage to go through that process for years. And after that, we all built a movement together with Freedom to Marry and GLAD and Mass, uh, Gay and Lesbian Caucus and Mass Equality and ACLU and all the other state and national organizations that had that early vision to bring the most strategic cases to court, but then to work together on a grassroots movement to defend it because it took a long time to be sure that we defended our decision here in Massachusetts. And we did that together. And that's the kind of organizing that has been going on in other states that brought marriage equality to those states and is going to make the difference in bringing to all 50 states. I want to say a little bit about what this has really meant to us personally. You know, when we first, um, when the court decision first came down in Massachusetts, Susan and I really sort of looked at each other and said, well, I guess now we can get married. And we hadn't really thought about it as something real. And, and we kind of realized how much, we never thought we were in the closet. We'd been together 27 years at that point. Our we had a 23-year-old son. And we never really felt like we were in the closet in a certain way, but we had really suppressed wanting all of the benefits and the community recognition to come to marriage. You kind of just put it out of your mind because how could you ever really have that? And, you know, Carl said, and, and first even the idea that we could try to get marriage equality just seems so far-fetched. Of course, the right didn't think it was far-fetched. That's why they passed it over. So, now we really have had the protection for nine years in Massachusetts that we deserve, and now we'll have those protections at the federal level. And that means things like, you know, we will not have to pay taxes on our uh, health insurance that I get from students. Uh, state health insurance plan. Uh, we were to lead in, in uh, compensating city employees for that, uh, those taxes. Now they won't have to do it, so that will be money to Cambridge. Uh, my employer, Katie Cattle, in Health Care Pro, a nonprofit, they've done the same thing. Now they won't have to do that because we'll be able to get those benefits as a matter of right. Uh, 
I'm 66 this year, 61, and now we can actually plan for our retirement knowing that we can share our social security benefits. Uh,
Chris and Rousey Crawley. And even though this was an ACLU case, it depends on the work of so many other people. Every group and every person here has been part of this, so thank you. Really. It, this has been a long time coming, and we couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. We are, though, especially proud at the ACLU today because we've been working on this for a long time. In fact, we've been working on this since 1936. That was the year that we took our first LGBT rights case, which was a challenge to the censorship of a lesbian team play right over the river in the city of Boston. We've also been working on marriage for a long time. In 1967, the ACLU brought another case to the U.S. Supreme Court, which struck down the bans on interracial marriage. And just a couple of years after that, in 1970, the ACLU filed the first federal freedom to marry lawsuit on behalf of same-sex couples. Now, it took a while for one of those challenges to succeed, but that's what we did today, thanks to our and we at the ACLU are so proud that the defeat of Goma has been woven into that history, and we hope that, we'll stay, that you'll stay with us for the rest of it. And the rest of it, by the way, means the celebration tonight at Club Cafe in Boston. We'll see you there. When the 
Supreme Judicial Court to rule for the first time in the United States of America, yes, our relationship are valid, worthy of respect, and equal treatment to privilege decisions. of California through the Prop 8 ruling, we have 13 states and the District of Columbia where marriage is valid, and I am so proud that now six New England states are marriage equality zones. As others have said before me, this is a day to celebrate while also acknowledging there is more work to be done. More work to be done on the issues like voting rights and harassment of employees in the workplace and some of the terrible things that the Supreme Court did do. But we are happy for our ruling, but we also have our eyes focused on the future and all that we need to do for our youth, for our elders, for the trans community. Take advantage of the momentum we have now and let's not stop our equality and the coverage decision. Thank you. 
can to make it happen. And so with that in mind, I am going to end with a thank you. A thank you to all the individuals and organizations who helped us to win this battle and this glorious victory today. And I want you to help me. So to the wonderful and brilliant attorneys and activists, field organizers and lobbyists who helped bring us here today, what do we say? Thank you! To the allies in the religious community, to the labor leaders, to the business leaders, to those who fought with us in the trenches, what do we say today? Thank you! To the elected officials who took votes that they would end their political careers, and to the justices and the judges who chose to do the right thing, today we say, thank you. To everyone who called and wrote and voted and contact legislators or asked others to do that, today we say, thank you. And to everyone who refused to stand by idly, very, very gay. very much aware of the 
Jenny put everything in their power to keep families like mine and yours from getting the legal recognition that we deserve. But today, the Supreme Court validated and affirmed my family and yours. And let me tell you, it feels wicked good. <laughs> wicked, wicked good. So I've always said that in Massachusetts, we know how to start a revolution. And as I stand here today, it is evident that another revolution is underway. A revolution of love. Today, many of the federal barriers to marriage equality have been dismantled, and we have taken enormous steps in the right direction. We are that much closer to the freedom to marry for all, and we must press on. We must. It's time. It's time for my mom, for your mom, okay, here I go, <laughs> for your dad, for your children, for your children's children. It's time for marriage equality for all Americans and for all American families. It is time. Thank you.